Welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Do you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? Because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, new management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So sit back and enjoy. And if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with a follow-up. It's been a while. Uh, a lot has happened since the last time Jeff Thompson and I spoke from Red Cat Holdings. Uh, ticker symbol RCAT. Jeff, thanks for coming in and giving us an update, man. Well, thanks for having me on again. So last time we talked, let's see, you were in the you were in the midst of selling off. Fat Cat and a couple of divisions and really primarily to focus on Department of Defense, right? Becoming a, a defense mm -hmm. player. Correct. Yep. Okay. And that as you just reported a quarter, which I thought was a pretty impressive quarter. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah. The street right now, small cap, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a battle. Uh, yeah. I think the pendulum, pendulum has swung way, way, way to the wrong side here for, for it, it's going to come back. There's no doubt in my mind about that, unless it's the end of the world. Um, and you just had a hell of a quarter and you're, and you're looking at having, you know, potentially a hell of a year if you, if you stay yeah. at this rate, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, you know, you got to remember we have a, a very uh, unusual uh, year, our, our, our year ends uh, this month in April. So uh, that'll be uh, our, our 10K will come out after this April. So um, we started selling the Teal 2 uh, last May. That was our first month of our new year for 2024. So we had a, a, a drone that was at, at zero revenue. And the first quarter, we did 1.75 million in sales in Q1 of this year, our year, 2024. Q2, um, we, we blew it out again. Uh, with uh, 3.9 million in sales, we gave guidance of 3 million. And I think we hit 3.9 in that queue. We gave guidance of 5 million for Q3 and we hit 5.85. Um, so we, you know, blew out our guidance again. Uh, and, you know, our last quarter, Q4, we, we gave guidance of 7 million. So sequential growth from zero revenue last year with the brand new Teal 2 drone 
to probably 18, 19 million in sales for the first year of this new, new drone. Um, so that's, uh, and that's been basically with feet on the street, organic sales, no big contracts from the army, uh, no big contracts from uh, any NATO countries yet. So this is just feet on the street, organic sales uh, to all our customers. And we do, so we, it's good that we should, we should bring that up. There's still the short range reconnaissance, reconnaissance uh, for the army that is still in play that, that second tranche, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we were the down selected is what the, the correct term is as a finalist. There's only two of us involved uh, for SRR. The, the award is uh, we, we have to deliver our beta drones uh, in May. Um, so the, and then the decision is supposed to come, uh, before the end of September, it could come sooner. Um, it's between us and, and another company. It was 37 of us at the beginning of this almost five years ago, Northrop, Boeing, Lockheed, Aero Environment, all of these companies. And now it's down, we're one of the finalists for this very large and the first program of record for quadcopters like this and group one drones. So we're, we're pretty excited. We think we're, and we think we're in a really good spot, but uh, kind of to, to, to go back to uh, Q4 guidance, uh, 7 million is, um, you know, that's a, a great guide up from where we were, but it's also, uh, we have to shut the factory down, uh, which it might already be shut down right now, to build the prototypes to deliver to the Army for the SRR program. So for us to shut down our sales, you know, shipping drones and not making drones, which is, you know, it's a very crucial thing to deliver these drones. We can't win the award if we don't ship these drones. So we had no problems doing that, but it's, uh, you know, hitting $7 million when you're basically getting uh, two thirds of your quarters, uh, it's a pretty big feat to be able to do that. That's incredible actually. Right. I mean, how are you pulling that off? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, we have some backlog, you know, we, we just, you know, we're, we're starting to scale our, our factory, the, 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 the factory scaling, we can do thousands and tens of thousands a year now. Uh, which is pretty unique because what the first thing we hear from all these NATO partners that we're talking to, everyone's got a small drone company here and there. There's a lot of companies in the Blue UAS group. None of them have uh, mass production in a factory yet. Getting to mass production is so hard to do. And to build a drone at scale, thousands per month, is very difficult. Um, I mean, if you listen to Elon Musk talking about manufacturing, he said there should be a movie about it because manufacturing is so much harder than building prototypes. And he's 1,000% correct. Yeah. So you guys, but you guys saw this a long, I mean, you've been on this way early, right? I mean, that's one of the things that I loved about this story from the very get-go was you had plans to, I mean, you expanded the, the size of your facility, doubled it, right? Yep. <clears throat> Put chips on the shelf. Uh, yep. In advance, before there was the whole the, the whole chip storm, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we actually bought all those chips before the Ukraine war broke out. So uh, we were preparing for um, SR because um, just to give everyone a quick history lesson, I don't want this to, to be a two hour interview, but <laughs> SRR was supposed to be. So there's three tranches to SRR. The first one started almost five years ago now, and each tranche, tranche one, two, and three, we're going to have a prototype contract for people to build prototypes, and then a production contract out of those people that got the prototype contract. So if you didn't get a prototype contract, you couldn't get a production contract. So the first one went to one of our competitors uh, years ago for $100 million for 1,083 drones. Um, then tranche two was supposed to be awarded last year by May. Um, so we were preparing. We bought all those chips. We were preparing for that May situation. So what they did after the, the, the war broke out, they said, we're going to take tranche three, combine it with tranche two. So there's no more tranche three anymore. Um, and what we're going to do is we want all the features that were supposed to be in tranche three. Now it's going to slow down tranche two, but now we're going to have a drone that's complete to all the features that we wanted in the requirements document for the U S army. So, you know, that whole thing got pushed out uh, for almost another year, but now we're, um, we have all the features in there. Um, we got down selected uh, in like December of last year. Uh, one of the companies didn't make it. So now there's only two of us. Uh, and so now we're um, just trying to 
build the 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 world's most capable drone for the U.S. Army right now. But let's talk about what we just talked about, which is the fact that you can build now thousands of drones, right? Yeah, that's that's a key capability for not only SRR but for the replicator initiative, uh, for some of the large contracts that uh, we're looking at NATO. Um, you know, everybody in that NATO region is trying to build up their arsenal of drones right now. Right. So let's talk about the replicator program because we haven't touched on that yet. G- give us a real quick breakdown of what what the hell is the replicator program? What is it all about? Yeah. So <laughs> last August, uh, Secretary Hicks came out and said we want to get thousands of drones that are small and attributable into the warfighters' hands within eighteen to twenty four months. So attributable, just think of the um, think of that as disposable uh, drones that don't always come back from the mission, so they can't cost millions of dollars. And small, and this is all based on uh, two things. One is the war in Ukraine; they've learned a lot, but a lot of this is to go after the the Chinese threat in Taiwan. And you'll hear a lot about mass, large volumes of drones, large volumes of soldiers, large volumes of not only drones that are in the air but land land and sea. So uh, to uh, get people ready for that, you have to have uh, the capability to build tens of thousands of drones because these are going to be used, quite frankly, in, in more of an overwhelm mode. So we can actually take drones and put them in a hive and load them onto the front of a boat. We just, uh, through a swarming capability, we just did a uh, test for someone I can't talk about where we were able to... Uh, using one of our partners to stare at an object called perch and stare for over eight hours, utilizing drones coming in and out of the formation, overcoming the battery limitations of a half hour. So, but we can also launch 80 drones and go after a target. So that'll be great for, you know, keeping a boat safe from uh, low flying uh, enemies and or on the shores uh, of people. When people are starting to come in, you can have these large swarms just go out and attack them. It's, just, it's just almost like, I mean, it sounds like a movie now. I mean, it's just yep. the stuff just is like, holy crap. This stuff is actually really happening, right? It's yeah, almost- no, it's it, it's 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 not only happening, it must happen. Uh, and we have that capability. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited about our the position we're in right now. Uh, you know, not only for SR, which for five years, almost, yeah, we are five years into it now. Um, and you couldn't be there if you weren't there from the beginning, which is great. So uh, but there's a, a lot of other programs that are just as large as the short range reconnaissance out there. And you're and you're on your way to cash flow positive without that, just organic growth. Yeah, so we don't ever put in our projections. Actually, someone asked on the call, I think uh, last quarter, uh, when can you get to break even? And uh, Leah, our, our interim CFO, uh, she told them with our with certain margins, that's eleven million dollars in quarterly revenue. The one little interesting nugget there. That's actually a gap number she gave, not oh. a cash basis. So if we typically have about a million dollars in uh, stock-based compensation, which is a non-cash item. So, you know, that could be, that number can be a lot lower. Got it. So how are, how are you on, the big thing right now with everyone is uh, cash, right? Yep. You're going to need to raise capital. Because the, no, the, we we just raised we just raised capital last year. We yeah. also finally were able to uh, get the spin out done with unusual machines, and uh, I'm at I'm at their factory right now. They're doing great. Um, and uh, what's exciting about that is we get we got a little bit of cash when we closed. Um, we have a note for another two million uh, to to get from them. We also have some uh, inventory adjustments that we'll get cash from also, and then we also have. Uh, 4.2 million shares of the company. Now, I mean, we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna ever sell those shares and, and crush the the stock price of unusual machines. We actually even might do it, uh, do a dividend for some of those shares to red cat shareholders. Okay, so let's talk about you. That's it's a ticker symbol on unusual machines. Is UMAC? Is it U U M A C? Yeah, U U M A C. Yep, on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to get in touch with them. I, I'm sure you can hook me up. For an interview, yeah. well, but they've got <laughs> they've got an interesting plan, right? About building all the motors and and different things right here in the United States. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm in their factory right now. 
Um, and what their, their goal is to become the number one supplier for all the drone companies out there to supply them with all the things that they need. Just like a, it's a lot of very large uh, suppliers to the car industry. Same, same type of thing, but to the drone industry. Right. And all made in the USA, which is going to be critical. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're still going to have Chinese business, but um, it's uh, they can still be a supplier to people like us and other companies. And I think, I think they're going to knock it out of the park. Yep. I think it makes a lot of sense. So, all right. Um, let's talk about just, just the, the last few partnerships you've announced with software companies, right. Mm -hmm. And how that can impact the, your sales and your margins. Yeah. It's, so this has always been a uh, part of our business model from the beginning because we're building an airframe for the department of defense, right? So everyone talks about dual use, um, Red Cat is dual use after the fact that we build a drone that the warfighter needs that can make their lives better, safer, and can complete their missions where they can actually have something that has strike capability and shape the battlefield to their advantage. Uh, if it happens to work for first responders, police, which we think there is, that's great. But first, there's, our focus is on the military, not only the U.S., DOD, but all of our, our allies uh, with the ministries of defense, NATO. So that's our number one concern. Our, our competitor in SRR is building an all-purpose drone that is not made for the warfighter. And, you know, they want to do enterprise. They want to do that, that. That's fine. But there's a huge, uh, that's a huge difference between us and other companies. Other companies always talk about dual use because they're so concerned that the market's not big enough for them and that they're going to have to be you know, DGI, the Chinese company is going to eat their lunch. Well, we think there's plenty of business for us to focus on, uh, you know, the, the DOD here in the United States. Uh, we have Border Patrol, we have DHS, you know, we have Cal Fires customers. It's, it's working as dual use, but our major focus is for the warfighter to have the tools that can help them win the battle. Right. So you've got, what is it, Primordial? Is that... Yeah. The, the yeah, one. so so the, the one of the key requirements is that it has to be an open platform so that third parties can build on top of that. Uh, again, our competitor has a closed platform. So if the if the so we built this great airframe and it's getting a lot of traction and it's performing very well and obviously with the sales ramping up as quickly as we are, but the the teal three, which is you know one that we have, we're going to be delivering the prototypes to to the army. Uh, next month uh, is going to have a lot of capabilities. It's going to be able to do uh, vision navigation, so you don't need a GPS. We're already uh, we 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 can go against uh, electronic warfare. Our drones are already uh, can go right through that. So our drones can work in real wartime. Yeah, you know, electronic warfare. You're talking about because I see a lot of, of companies coming out with you know kill kill drone technology, right? So yep, you're saying that your drone is going to be able to blast through that stuff yes it it does it's not will be it it already does so uh this technology can get through that uh gps's are useless uh in the ukraine right now you know you don't even turn it on um so the the goal for us is to be able to give a a soldier something that'll work that'll go farther distances even against electronic warfare devices so they don't have to be as close to the to the fighting and then on top of that, depending on what your 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 mission goals are, um, if you need to build you know two D uh, real time and three D mapping of an object that you just went up to check out that that target, we can do that with reveal technologies. If you need artificial intelligence, you know FLIR, we just announced a partnership with their artificial intelligence. They can identify. They've been if you look at all the war movies out there or or any footage about uh, thermal stuff, you always see the little FLIR in the corner. Yep. They've got 20, 20 years of war database with objects and identifi identification. So that's a software platform you can get on the get on the teal drone, teal two and teal three. So uh, also, if if you want to do swarm, we have that capability. Uh, you know, if if you want to do uh, you know voice command uh, through uh, Primordial, that we we have that too. So we've built the platform for people to use and. You can pick the software you want on top of it. We don't force it down your throat. 
So, uh, and uh, in the, each time you bring one of those software platforms onto our, our drone, that actually brings up our margins dramatically. Right. So like an a la carte type deal that they can put together and each time they add something that, that adds to your margins, right? Yeah. I mean, you've got a cell phone. You First, you just buy it and then you choose the apps that you want on top of it. So, um, you know, this is our airframe. <laughs> and then you put on the software that you need on top of that to make yeah. it useful for you. That's fantastic. I mean, the growth, the positioning that you're in right now with the factory, uh, the chips, I mean, everything. I, I think you're aligned extremely well. I don't think that, I think the uh, the bloodbath in the small micro caps, I think is coming to an end. That's my personal view. I, I don't think the Fed's going to raise the rates anymore. I think we at least know these, at least stand pat on that. I don't know if he's going to cut anytime soon, but if he does, that would be a good thing. I think there's a lot of, lot of um, there's a lot of negativity out there, but I think there's also a lot of positive things that have been happening in the micro cap and small cap space and people aren't recognizing it. Right. Yeah, no, we're, we're completely ignored. Let's just face it since 2021. And then in the last, you know, six months, all you had to do is put, you know, even a micro cap fund, they're just taking their money, put it in NVIDIA for three months and wait for it to double. So they don't have to do any uh, due diligence, hard work. They just have to, you know, pick the, the, the mag seven or the fab four and they get the returns that they need. That's not going to last forever. Then they have to start looking, they'll, they'll come down market into uh, small cap and micro cap. But, you know, you look at a company like ours, which is growing double digits sequentially every quarter for the foreseeable future. Um, and, uh, you know, as I was just mentioning, uh, 11 million on a gap basis on a quarterly rate to get to profitability, probably under 10 uh, with, uh, on a cash basis, not non-gap basis. So at 7 million of guidance, we're a lot closer to the 10 than we are at a zero in just right. a couple of quarters. So that's pretty rapid growth to get to profitability, which we're focused on. But right now we're really just trying to, you know, while this, this uneasy worldwide situation that we're in, which is never going back um, to uh, the way it was with globalism, everybody needs to make sure that they have the drones that they need. Everyone is changing their defense budgets. Even Japan has a defense budget again. So it's, it's going to be years and years of growth in the drone industry. Uh, specifically, there was a, uh, you know, there was a, a great uh, part on CNBC this morning where they said defense is setting up perfectly for 2025. And it is. So there's going to be a lot of activity. You got the replicator initiative, uh, we're almost done with the short range reconnaissance, which is a uh, you know twelve thousand drones, and the first thousand were for a hundred million. So you can do your own math on that and what that program of records worth. Plus, the when they combined tranche three into tranche two, they made it almost a ten year program. I think it goes to 20, 2033. So that's going to be a long, long path of uh, revenue replacements every three years, spares, parts, training. Uh, there's there's a lot to that, so we we hope that uh, you know we're gonna uh, come out a winner there. And well, let me uh, ask you, Jeff. Oh, no, you, you said you had to shut down the factory. Why did you have to shut down the factory right now to do? Yeah, well, but, well I wouldn't say shut it down. We we, we shifted from making the teal two okay. to making the prototypes uh, and oh, and two. having yeah for the for the uh, short range reconnaissance okay, uh, methodology. So. And uh, so, you know, hopefully we get them done really quickly and we turn it back on before the end of the queue. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really just more concerned with getting these these beautiful new prototypes. They're literally going to be one of the most capable drones ever made in the Group 1 uh, class. Yeah. Teal is, how is, uh, is it Skype, is it Skypersonic? Skypersonic? The other, the other division that you have, that you got. Yeah, well, was, yeah, Skypersonic is. Uh, we did not sell that with the consumer division uh, because we think the uh, it's an Italian-based bird. It has some really cool things that um, they have the remote piloting capability, which um, that technology is really important because what you're hearing a lot about now, and actually there's been some some demonstrations out there running around Twitter and and LinkedIn where you're you're taking other vehicles and and dropping drones 200 miles into country. So you need a relay and remote piloting, which we've been doing remote piloting for years. I mean, um, it was just um, over two years ago, we did a, we had a pilot here in Orlando at the Rotorite factory doing an inspection on train tracks in, in Italy. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we can, we can be 40 miles back or a hundred miles back dropping out drones from other, other drones and then piloting them from there. So that's a key, key technology. Plus it's a, it was a Italian made drone and we think it's uh, you know, good technology that we're going to have to get uh, to be made in USA. Um, they would, uh, you know, not great timing for us, but the, those indoor drones would be really, really compelling to have for uh, the Israeli uh, Gaza situation where they can be indoors, their GPS denied. They can light up a whole room. We, you know, we've, we've done demonstrations with the army. We, we cleared buildings uh, with, with that drone. So um, it's kind of a, uh, I don't want to say mothballed, but basically uh, because we have, I mean, literally drinking out of a fire hose with the TL2 and the TL3, yeah. uh, we are, we're, we're using the technologies that we own and, and the, uh, the patents that we own to do that. And uh, we think there'll be a lot of stuff we can do with that, but, but not in the next uh, six to nine months. Okay. Uh, how, how, how many shares do you have fully diluted outstanding, Jeff? About 74 million. About 74 million, which is still to me under hundred million. It is still yeah. small, right? I mean, that's, that's small. And tightly yeah. held by insiders. Uh, gosh, I own 14.2 million shares. Um, but uh, there's, um, I mean, the, the, the insiders uh, before the last round were about uh, 40% of the company okay. management, things of that nature. So, but uh, we still are uh, very significant shareholders. And like I said, we're also 40% shareholders now in uh, UMAC on the New York Stock Exchange. Which, so this could, this could be a, a double whammy here. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, they're doing great, um, but we're, we, you know, for us to be solely uh, focused on the DOD, we can't have any connection to China. Um, so this has worked out really well. It took a while for us to get the, the UMAC uh, acquisition completed. It's now completed. It's closed. Um, they're doing great. We're doing great. So uh, I think both stocks will do well once people start looking at micro cap again. I think, you know, the stock is actually, your stock is, um, and I'm going to move your your uh, logo for a second here so that I can show the chart. The stock is actually kind of bumping up. It's been in a downtrend, but if you look here, it's been actually kind of moving in, a, in an uptrend from here on um, There we go. Uh, let's see. Well, you can show me that uptrend all day long. I think it's horrible that our stock is <laughs> at 80, 80, 80 cents. But I mean, and, and we're not even getting any credit for, you know, if, if we do 7 million in this quarter, that's almost a $30 million annual run rate based on that quarter. And if you just took some of our peers in the, even the old staunchy um, defense multiples, yeah, we should be at we should be at about one hundred eighty million to two hundred million dollar market cap. Yeah, well, so we're not getting any credit right now, so we just got to keep performing, keep executing. You know, that's a, look, Jeff. It's all you can do is just keep executing, right? I mean, for right now, I mean, like, it is insane what you said. There's basically seven companies that are driving the market higher. I mean, Apple could buy 17 countries right now with a $3 trillion yeah. valuation, right? I mean, that is not sustainable. And it certainly isn't yeah. going to double, right? So yeah. at some point, this will become a stock picker's market. Again, it won't be seven companies. It will be a whole bunch of different companies that are going to... Because it's, it's not just you. Yeah. No matter what you post... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't seem to matter. Yeah. It, stock gets a pop for about a, a, an hour, and then it yep. pulls out, right. No, no. I mean, it's it's you know when people come back and start looking at, at uh, micro cap and small cap, they're going to look for growth. We have growth. They're going to look make sure that you have enough cash to profitability. We have plenty of cash to make it to profitability. They're going to want to make. Sure, they're going to see. They want to see margin expansion. We're going to have margin expansion. Uh, they're going to want to make sure that you're in a good market. We're in an incredible market. Every day you read something about the uh, drones are changing warfare. Who's there's only two companies in our size in the United States. The United States has the largest defense market in the world by multiples. 
we're one of two companies that can get one of the largest contracts for Group One drones. So we are so well positioned. We just got to keep executing, keep improving our sales. You know, sell the drones, make the drones, deliver the drones, collect the cash. And the factory, keep doing that. The factory's humming now. I mean, is it humming now? You you got it dialed in. That was another that, last time we did the interview too. It was you were still working through some kinks, but now you're yeah humming. yeah no yeah we're we're a mass production. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty excited where that's going, you know, and, and, uh, we're improving the drones. The, the more you produce your drones, the, the better the drone gets, the yields get better, they get more reliable. Uh, so you get rid of all the bugs and all that stuff carries forward into the new versions, um, you know, that we're delivering to the army. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, were very unique to us that nobody else will do in the United States, uh, in the group one drone category. Uh, and, you know, more, one of those key items is lethality. Um, we are uh, we are one of the only drone companies in the U.S. in the Group 1 drones that will actually do lethality for the Department of Defense. Our, our competitors won't do it. So uh, there's if, if you don't have strike capability, you're really putting the warfighter in a bad spot. They're not shaping the battlefield when they don't have strike capability. They have to, you know, oh, I see a target. You got to relay that information back, give sudden field coordinates, try to try to call in a long, long range hit. And then they move and they take off and your battery's running out. You got to bring another bat, something into the air. So you see a target, you've got a, a, a drone in the air. You see a target right there. Just go, just go get the target. No, no waiting. Take that immediate action. That'll definitely give the, the warfighter a way to shape the battlefield and a huge advantage to them. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. So I didn't know that you had that capability on the, on the, Drones. I didn't know that. The teal, the teal two doesn't have it, but uh, the teal three will have complete lethality capabilities. Okay. All right. So that was that's that's that I did not know. And it, so the the other drone companies don't want to do it because they don't want to be seen as a a, a a war weapon. Is that what it is? Yeah. They they uh you know they can go look at their websites. You don't have to listen to me. It's right oh. on their website. A, a that they will not weaponize, and B they won't they won't work with companies that do weaponize which I think the U.S. Army is a pretty large company that weaponizes stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, why would – anyway, no, I'm glad you're doing it. I'm glad somebody's doing it, and I'm glad somebody's doing it that's got one of the largest drone manufacturing facilities in the United States. Correct, yep. If not the largest. Is it the largest, or is it – Oh, from what we, we think we are, uh, I haven't gone to our competitor's place, but uh, it's uh, – Ours is nice. Uh, probably, I heard they're close to the same size, but okay. Um, but we're we're making drones for the warfighter. They're making drones for enterprise. Got it, Jeff. I want to thank you. Look, next time, and if you don't want this to be a long interview, yeah, let's just do more of them, right? Okay. <laughs> what happens is I got twenty thousand things to try to fit into a little, right? <laughs> it's too. Uh, yeah, we'll 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 get one in a. a about a month or two, we should we should be some exciting times. Okay, that is a that is a deal. I, thanks for coming in. I I think right here right now, if you're not in the stock, if you're just watching the stock, um, that's fine. But I think this is a good opportunity. To me, it looks like you're getting a pie formation. You're getting a coil here, and at some yep. point, I think the coil is going to break to the upside, not to the downside. I think the downside's already been put in. So then you yep. start a trend. Right. And if yep. you catch the, the beginning of a new trend, that can last for a long time to the yep. upside, right? Revenue growth, margin expansion, plenty of cash to make it a profitability, great new products. We've we've got it, we're we're in a fantastic position and our and our product has been selling very well from zero to eighteen million in one year. That's a pretty good product launch. That's pretty good. So Red Cat Holdings, R-C-A-T is the symbol. That right there is their IR department. Sign up for their email alerts if you are not signed up. That way you get any time they come out with a news alert or any kind, it goes right to your email and you can pay attention to what's happening with the company. There's a lot of exciting things going on here. So Jeff, thank you for taking the time to do this. We'll do it again. We're going to do it again sooner, not so far out. Yeah, right. yeah. I'll keep you in the loop. All right. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to shut this off. Thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Trading. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Jeff Thompson. 
from Red Cat Holdings, ticker symbol RCAT. If you did enjoy today's interview, please do us a favor, smash that subscribe button, give us a share, and how about giving us a like? Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Trading wishes you the very best of success. Mm -hmm.